The ANC has outlined various policy resolutions adopted during its 55th National Conference, which wrapped up this weekend. In a lengthy media briefing, members of the ANC NEC gave details on where the party stands on issues ranging from international relations to ESCOM and the Reserve Bank. Our reporter, Gavin Whittles, joins us live now for more on this. Gavin, great to catch up with you. Some key nuggets, uh, elements that you picked up from that briefing earlier? Indeed, we're coming to you live from outside the Free State ANC's provincial headquarters after a marathon briefing lasted about six hours and we were briefed by the heads of the commissions um, at the conference. It ranged from peace and stability, uh, governance, um, international relations, education, health, science and technology, communications, um, the energy, economic transformation, um, and a few others that we'll have to get into a little bit later because it was a little overwhelming. Let's go through some of the breaking news pointers that have emerged from this um, uh, essentially breakdown of what the resolutions of the ANC uh, is the, from the conference. The first big resolution is that the ANC has decided to rescind its decision to withdraw from the International Criminal Court. Of course, that would apply to South Africa as well, and the ANC citing uh, substantive reforms that have been undertaken by uh, the International Criminal Court in its engagement with it. The second is that the party has resolved that the government should set preferential procurement targets that would specifically benefit military veterans. Uh, they're saying that they realize that this might lead to a case where uh, the people from the South African Defense Force, the apartheid-era military, um, who, who merged with the SANDF, would also be entitled to this preferential procurement. Um, but they're specifically aiming to address the plight of military veterans that are sleeping on the street. But really, the, the key takeaways here relate to the economy. Firstly, the ANC is saying there's nothing wrong with wanting to build more nuclear capacity. Also saying there's nothing wrong with wanting uh, one of the BRICS countries to build that capacity. Uh, that would either be Russia or China, Brazil or India. Um, and also saying that so far, Kuburg has proved to be the most reliable and affor affordable form of energy for the country as it battles the energy crisis. Uh, then the party also going a step further saying that it wants the government or parliament to initiate a land redistribution bill that would give the state access to agriculture farms. Um, and of course one of the big takeaways has been the ANC's decision on the Reserve Bank. Uh, they're saying that they're not walking back the decision for calling for the nationalization of the Reserve Bank, but they don't want speculators to get rich off of the ANC's resolutions, which do affect the RAND. Yesterday, when we reported on this, the RAND uh, losing a, a percent. Uh, today, uh, Mamaloka Kubai, the outgoing chair of the uh, Economic Transformation Commission, a lot more uh, carefully a lot more cautious in the way that she carefully worded the outcome of the resolution. Let's take a look at what she had to say about this um, and the exact specifics on what the ANC is calling for when it comes to the Reserve Bank. The issue of the private ownership of the Reserve Bank was observed that it continues to be an anomaly as you saw with our documents in the policy that we continue to say in the long term it has to be corrected but we are saying it shouldn't be at the expense of the fiscals. So we continue to say government must explore on this matter, look at what we can do, because we noted, we reported to, to conference that when we took this resolution, then the speculators, the, the, the prices went up, and we're saying we should not enrich the speculators at the expense of the country, and that's why it must be done in a responsible way. And one of the issues that was discussed is to say, there is a, or we reaffirmed the independence of the South African Reserve Bank, based on the Constitution, uh, that has been reaffirmed. Well, Gavin, we pick up certainly from the posters or the banners that we're seeing in the background that uh, building communities together is one of those things that the ANC has uh, talked about. Was this uh, something that was discussed uh, earlier? It was. Unfortunately, we didn't get a briefing on the social transformation element um, of the ANC's discussions and what the resolution is. Some uh, interesting information about um, informal traders, though, the ANC believing that informal traders in South Africa shouldn't be charged 
to sell goods on the street. They shouldn't need to have a permit uh, to conduct their trading. That's the resolution. They'll take that to government, to the Department of Small Business and Training. And, um, of course, we know that there were extensive discussions on the question of foreign nationals in South Africa. In that respect, the Peace and Stability uh, Commission, uh, speaking about the need uh, to educate foreign nationals living in South Africa on how to obey South Africa's laws, but also expressing explicit concern uh, with what they believe are uh, syndicates operating in South Africa, funneling money out of the country, acknowledging that the recent high-profile arrests of international wanted suspects uh, indicates that the law enforcement agencies are starting to work better with each other. Interestingly, Defense Minister Tandi Modisa also digging in her heels, refusing to withdraw her comment that the USA seems to be bullying South Africa when it comes to South Africa's position on the Russia-Ukraine conflict, saying South Africa is a sovereign state and um, it will not tolerate uh, other nations telling it which side to pick in a conflict. That, of course, is the paraphrasing, the Defence Minister putting it much more clearly. Uh, but coming back to small businesses, we're outside the Free State Provincial House. Um, at the moment, there are a number of small businesses that are operating here. The hawkers aren't just at the stadiums. Uh, they've also set up shop outside the ANC's provincial headquarters. We'll try to show you visuals now um, of those headquarters, or of those uh, stalls by the hawkers. Um, and it's really like uh, uh, an amazing affair where we have many people from across the country uh, that are coming here to try and make some money all of them selling ANC branded t-shirts um, and all of them hoping that they would make enough money to make the trip to the Free State to Bloemfontein a success. Of course, they'll hope to sell more, more of, their, um, of their wares tomorrow when that January 8th statement is delivered at the stadium. And that's, of course, where the, most of them are set up. But there is a hive of activity here outside the provincial headquarters. Well, I suppose one of those issues that everybody is keen to find out what was said about is uh, the issue of energy. Uh, what did you pick up on that, that part of the conversation, Govan? Well, the ANC believes that there should be an urgent decision taken on the uh, development of transmission lines for renewable energy to be fed into the grid, along with gas um, to be fed into the grid using the existing transmission lines. Interestingly, the ANC resolving now that municipalities should be able to partner with independent power producers. They want the coal-fired power stations to run at full capacity. That's really asking a lot, considering that the energy availability factor of ESCOM is currently at 50%, and its coal-fired power stations are plagued by unplanned trips and overdue maintenance, that probably being the most unrealistic of the resolutions that the ANC is asking for, but really what they're asking for is a better utilization of ESCOM's coal-fired power station fleet. Um, then, interestingly, as I said, they wouldn't mind partnering with the BRICS country to develop more energy uh, sources. They've pointed out that nuclear and gas energy has been classified as green energy by the International Energy Agency, um, and they believe that this should be tapped into, um, and that they're willing to do that. They hope to use the South Africa's chairpersonship of the BRICS uh, forum, which had begun on the 1st of January, uh, to initiate what the Economic Transformation Committee calls legacy projects uh, in the field of energy. Essentially, they want the BRICS partners to invest in South Africa's uh, or invest in, in fixing South Africa's energy crisis. Of course, that will happen uh, once we know if those countries are able to do so. Last time, such an idea was pitched. It was by former President Jacob Zuma, who wanted uh, Russia's state-owned entity to build a nuclear power plant in South Africa. The, the ANC conference here has called for a direct partnering between South Africa's state-owned entities and the BRICS country's state-owned entities, in a way endorsing that initial decision. Whether they'll take it as far as having Russia, uh, um, Gazprom coming back to South Africa to build that plant is probably too soon to tell. Uh, but they certainly are leaning in that direction. Well, certainly it looks like they have their work cut out for them. Govan Whittle is coming to us on the back of that lengthy media briefing on the back of the 55th National Conference.